Anyways, let's look at the wash facilities right now. We got a little time. It's going on uh, quarter two. I'm gonna, we'll start here. This is the main wash barn. This is where all the greens go through. None of the roots come through ha here at all. So any crop that I'm hoping to get GAP certified, shallots, beets, carrots, that kind of stuff doesn't come through here. My staff is pretty good. We're lucky enough we don't have pigeons in our barn. That's not really this neck of the woods. Our facilities aren't that big just quite yet. Um, we have an issue in here with our dogs and our cats. I just, did you guys see me spray that one cat out of the wash barn? So tomorrow morning at six, when my wash crew comes in here, they're gonna spray the hose, right? They're gonna try to get any hair out of there. They're gonna do what I call, do the visual check. Before my tour started, I walked around here and I did a visual check. I didn't do super great, but you know, if there's a bunch of rotted tomatoes in the middle of my wash barn, do I really want fruit flies in my wash barn? No, I don't. So I feel like my farm does pretty good for the most part with visual checks. Certain individuals are better than other individuals. Um, my wash barn this year is they're really great guys. So for instance, this, uh, these are salad spinners. I do not own a fancy greens drying machine. So I, uh, there's a little uh, washing machine motor in here. We welded this up. I bought these things you guys know. Um, we just welded a little stainless steel, got some nice nasty fumes, put a little like a PTO shaft. We were actually watching the manure spreader go drinking beer a couple years ago. And we're like, I wonder if we could do that with salad greens. And it works. Um, it really works. Pretty much that's gonna spin about as long as it takes me to dip in for the next round of spinach. Maybe I'm gonna go get a couple more nets. Go like this. I have no specific time that I spin my greens. Some people are a little bit more anal retentive than me. I just get it done, right? I mean, we're harvesting a ton of greens. Tomorrow there'll be, we have those bigger green bins. You guys recognize those ones. Those will hold dry about seven pounds of greens. If it rains tonight, that's gonna be more like 11 pounds of greens. So I average it eight. So when I do my numbers, I say one of the, I'm sorry, Amy's standing right next to there. One of those bins that Amy's got has eight pounds of greens in it. By the time it's spun dry. Our greens, if you've ever bought them at market, they are not Olivia's organic greens. They are not Juniper Hill greens. They are more wet. They're a farmer's market green. Our greens do really well when they're kept super cold and then when they don't leave the cooler, right? So, or they air out. So I tell people when they buy my greens, leave their bag open at farmer's markets, right? Just don't like Mrs. Johnson, right? You know, she buys like this much arugula and wonders why you have to charge her a dollar as like it. And she goes Rah! with the bag. I'm like, ah, oh! <laughs> that's not our product. Um, our product is, is definitely more wet. I find we're allowed, we're, we're able to do a lot higher volume of that stuff. If I'm shipping that product, I'm going to harvest that product 24 to 48 hours before that product ships. For instance, on Friday, we're harvesting 260 pounds of a field mix for Rochester, for instance. Okay. Um, those are going to get netted. They're going to come in. They're going to get spun dry in my wash water. I'm going to put, you see that stuff over there? Sanidate 5.0, the little pricey. I trust that stuff. That's me. That's just me. I'm only one organic farmer. I like that stuff. When I open it, I feel like I'm going to die, but not as much as some of the other stuff. Anyways, um, I should probably order some more of that stuff. Anyways, the appropriate volumes we're gonna put in here, all that stuff is gonna get put in the crates for the bigger orders that ship, in which I'm asking the greens to stay longer in people's refrigerators. All the greens are, all these bins are gonna get dipped like this in a very, very light bleach water. And then they're gonna, then they're gonna get put here on a surface that has been bleached and sprayed down with only cold water. I do not have hot water in this facility. They're going to get put in here and then they're going to get stacked in the big cooler, which we're going to at 38 degrees. And they're going to sit there for 24 hours. And that is an integral part of the way I do greens. The greens dry out. A lot of these units, right? They dehydrate stuff. So that's why they say carrots in storage. You know, we did a, a nice big class on that uh, to keep carrots hydrated and, and all that stuff. And we spray our carrots down every week, just like you take the garbage out. 
So if I leave those greens in there for 24 hours, they're going to be a really nice consistency that we're going to bag them up and then they're going to leave. And this year we've had, we've had much better feedback now that we do that. If we can't do that process, I do not take the order. It's so hard for me to pass up an order like that. If we do not have the time to do that, I do not take the order. Alec, do you hear they say I said that twice? Um, the reason is because we flopped on so many rounds of greens and which, and I, you know, I'm like doing one of these and I'm like, go get more and let's go. And the bins are everywhere and going like this and then pack it and, and go. And it's like, hey, your greens rotted in four days. It's like, damn it. I think that's the process that works for us. You got to find your own process. Those are wholesale greens. Those are like the greens that we're only getting like $3.85 for. Anyways, we're going to look in this cooler. This is our first cooler. You guys can poke and come in. This cooler is where I keep tomatoes, cucumbers. I keep this at anywhere from, I don't know, let's see, 47, 48. Colvis is 45. Uh, right now it's around 46. It's usually like when people get in like 47, 48 degrees. This is the first year we've actually had the space. This new cooler for us, because it was brand new, uh, we were able to, to actually do this and that's just great. We just got a cool bot. We're not gonna burn the condenser out. Um, I, I clean this cooler, probably like, like deep clean it, bleach it, the whole nine yards, probably once a week. Um, this, is, this is the older part. You guys can see the spray foam here. Um, this stuff will pass, this cooler would pass, um, except for it doesn't have any floor drains. So I pretty much just keep the local stuff in here. Um, if I need, if I'm swamped, what I will do is I think Paul, who's not in here right now, was asking me about um, field heat, taking the field heat off. This is where I take the field heat off. Um, if this cooler spikes up to 57 degrees, for the eggplants, it's not the end of the world. It'll go back down to 45, 46 in a couple of hours. And so this has been a really nice place. It keeps the critters off the stuff. Um, it, it just, it's a great place. The products are holding a lot longer. So, you know, this is peppers, eggplants, tomatoes. I put my beans in here now. Um, it's a nice space. I feel real fortunate for it. It doesn't suck up a ton of electricity. Um, and I, what I say to these guys, we do a, about once a month, we do a deep clean of it. We could jackhammer some floor drains in here. I was thinking about just like taking a Sharpie and just being like, yeah, there's a floor drain right there, but that would never pass. Um, so we're not sure if we're gonna, this, we're, we're just, we call this the local cooler. This is the local cooler, but it is a great spot when stuff comes in and we're overwhelmed in the wash barn, right? Each bin here that comes in, shh, spray with the hose, spray with the hose, stack them up, and they can be in here for 45 minutes, an hour, before they go to the water. And I'm finding that that water is staying a lot colder for a lot longer because of taking the field heat out of it. So it's a great place to have a ginger soda at the end of the day, too. Um, all right, let's go check out the crow's nest. <laughs> so wait, why don't we do this? Okay, remember those carrots that we put on a hay cart? Remember those hay carts of carrots? All right, well, here comes Cameron driving in. He's gonna rope the truck around. He's gonna not put the hay cart right here. So what this really is, is this is an onion topper. This is what you use to top onions. Um, we use it for, you know, we only use it three or four times a year to top onions with. We use it every week for carrots. Um, it's gonna go on now. stand at the end of it and watch it happen. Sometimes I just space out here and have a cup of coffee and just watch it top carrots. Okay, so how let's- we, How did you register it from an onion? I didn't. Oh, oh. I'm gonna, t I, I, I'm gonna go down in the history books in New York State for this. this, is the only thing. We had this other one that we shared with Juniper Hill and it, it caused a glitch in our relationship, but we're back on track. I go, he got this carrot harvester and I was super jealous and I was like, I got it come up with something and we had this topper that we bought together it used to sit over there and I was real I was pissed I was pissed off at the end of the day 
And I had a bin of beats that the guys were bundling, like swag beats that were seconds. And I was like, and it, it, it hit me. And I threw a beat in there and it went, it took the top right off. I'm like, oh. And my business partner was standing right there. He's like, <laughs> threw another one. I was like, Psh. like, ah. So we like took a couple more and threw them in and went, Psh. we're like, oh my God. And then we went out, we just got in the truck, went out to the field, we got carrots. And what we noticed is that it wasn't quite as awesome if the carrot isn't finished, right? That's a pretty finished carrot, right? Why is it a finished carrot? Sorry, no, I feel like because I learned that I can say it. Because the, the, the end really bulbs out, right? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> these, these carrots are finished. They are ready to go. Do we have any? For storage. For, for storing, yeah. And you see that carrot right there? Like that's a, yeah. exactly. The, the fact that this carrot looks like this, yeah, it, it made it, it through the topper, is what makes this work. It's probability. So, out of all, out of the four beds of rainbow carrots that we threw, threw through here, out of every 10 carrots, one of them's gonna get busted. So when you ask me about spacing, that's the probability that I go. It's gonna look like that, second. So I got it growing off to make this machine work for me to make sure that I'm getting enough of stuff, you know, that looks like that. That's really too bad because that's a real nice carrot. That's like a compliment. Are you kidding me? You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through here. I'm going to eat these carrots tonight. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, this one specifically, I'm just going to put it back. So we're talking on the carrot circuit. What's that? No, yeah, Amy, we're, we're all going to come back here. Amy, after. yours are right here. Oh, okay. Right. There's some parsley and dill. Um, so this is freaking 100% awesome with beets. Beets, turnips, radishes, anything like that. Uh, bulbous and glo globular, glo globally, whatever. It looks like a ball. Uh, it's a risk. It's a risk. Um, when the carrot is finished, it will go through that topper. I will lose one out of every 10 carrots through that topper, but it is worth it for me to use that topper we top into these green bins, and hopefully if I crush it in Brooklyn, it's gonna be a new sturdy orange bin, which I've already picked out, which I can't afford. Um, these things are heavy as hell when they're loaded, you guys know. I, I tell my staff, we don't fill these any more than three quarters, right? This barrel washer, in order for the chain not to break, can handle a three quarter or full bin. It goes in like this, turn the barrel washer on, Right. So, as of today, I do not have the barrel washer hooked up to any type of sanitation piece of equipment. As of 2019, on this wall, there will be, we'll, this is, we'll just inject the sanitizer and we will wash with that. That electrical shit is over my head. That's why my business partner is a fan. This guy, that's the scenario. We'll be able to use this facility all winter. Um, the big bulk crates will come in. Uh, maybe my buddy will let me use his bin dumper. We'll dump bins in here. And I spend, in the winter, it's mostly just me and one or two other guys. You know, I spend the majority of the ice cold winter days when I'm not skiing, washing carrots in a barrel washer. Outside? It's terrible. <laughs> Excuse my language. Uh, so we're hoping before we're able to do this system, we're gonna move this in there, which we're gonna go look at in a minute, um, which is gonna be, which is gonna look really well anyways and be clean. So um, you end up with a lot of tops underneath this thing. How do you get yeah, them out of there? And awesome, elsewhere? great, awesome, great question. Um, this is a pretty responsible place for a rake. Um, I was just, that was just a side note. Um, sucks you gotta get under here you gotta go like that the more frequently to do it um vinny vinny top carrots this morning yesterday right what's your least favorite part about this machine other than it's loud and it's dangerous getting the tops out from underneath probably right other than what that it's dangerous other than it's dangerous and loud <laughs> getting it getting the tops out right yeah i guess so but well, he's the man because he's just like coming to help out here for two weeks. Um, it, what we need to do is weld a piece of metal 
a little chute that comes down that'll sit right on here that'll go right there I do need to keep this area free for walking and so we only started topping carrots about three weeks ago so uh, we kind of got this thing we're, we're kind of seeing the flow here as you can see this is a little unkempt I'm not super happy with what's going on but there's a reason for that this this area of the farm is a work in progress the staff members that work at Fledging Crow we sit down and we drink coffee and we're like what do we like about this it's like man this compost crate every time I hit my shin on it I don't want that I really don't want that it's easier for the tractor the forklift to come in this way but really this thing wants to be turned like this and really so this is a, a work in progress area as you can see the state of this area the cleanliness of this area I would give it like an F plus <laughs> going back to grade school um, they just sort of tidied up but I'm not super pumped about it but I'm also not gonna say anything about it because I'm not GAP certified um, NOFA is super cool they know that I'm a safe responsible farmer and I'm not like peeing in my carrots um, <laughs> if so, if a piece of produce drops on the ground stays on the ground don't bend over and pick it up and put it in the clean bin it's not a clean carrot right um, I kind of give the people that work on this line a lot of credit because if you've ever looked at a carrot for 10 to 12 hours four days in a row you get a little zoodled you know, like that um, yeah it's just good farm work though right like carrots topper brewing what do you guys think you guys were on the carrot wine this is not the end of the world right no. doable no. Hunter and Vinny this whole line gets sanitized before we start running carrots through it obviously we got this trap door right here behind this radio this opens up and we just slide this through this is where the product goes back through into the cooler and then we shut it at night so the critters don't get in and then let's go check out where it goes this is a work in progress too don't wait the freaking baby Anyways, I'm pretty proud of this facility. This was our big cooler for about two years, and it was awesome. This is an in-between facility for me right now. We're running a little warm in here. We're running 47. Not super pumped about it. The guys just got out of here while we were in the field. When I come in here tomorrow, I want to see like 42. If I don't, I'm a little questionable. We see we got a little ice on this guy. <clears throat> For those of you guys that know, we, those are cool bot units. Uh, we just blew a condenser on that one. We had one in there for like a year and a half. We go through air conditioners anywhere from a year. I, the one in the small cooler is left, but it's like five or six years it's been running. So it's kind of how hard we push them. I can tell you right now though, something is up with that because this cooler, we just put this one in and we're running a little running a little warm in here carrots want to live anywhere from like 37 to 38 that's where they're happiest this is kind of a in between so tomorrow this is sort of the grab and go area right so the way that we get carrots into these bags is uh i think it's pretty inventive it took me a while to figure it out but once again the old road cone comes through certified organic road cone so this comes on here you grab a master bag as we call the 25 pound bags put it like this put this over the bag right slip it in here dump the carrots on a sanitized surface pile them in here flip this up it usually comes up every time and you've got yourself a bag of carrots which is then moved over to the scale, which has been sanitized the early day. We get 25 pounds in here, wrap it, pack it. If you can't do a thousand pounds in three hours, you don't work in here. So 25 pound bags, you guys figured out. It, you can rip with this thing. And it's super fun, there's carrots everywhere. All right, so what are we doing? So we go like this, all right? Stick those guys up, flip it over, sort of the conic, the, you know, this is like, I actually just cut two buckets and then I put two in there. 
So it's actually two buckets. Kind of going it down like this. Boom. Set that in there like that. And then these are actually, this one gentleman that was doing it, he likes to grab bags. I like to have this like this. Because carrots fall. So, boom, I take my thing. Carrots in. They're all pre sorted. They're all pre sorted, exactly. Right. And you know, it's like, a, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, like a, like a batter's box. You know what I mean? Once you've got to kind of get your groove, right? So how'd I do? That's 21 pounds of carrots. So you got another, another batch to top it off to 25. Yeah. yeah, so I've got a clean bit of carrots right here. Top it off, take the zip tie. Zip tie it and unpack it. Um, the gentleman that was doing this was a little taller than me. It's like, well, why does that matter? Everyone's got a different flow. I like to have it pretty like clean around my feet. Um, this guy just did it differently than me. Um, so yeah, that's the scenario. That's how I bag carrots. Um, over here on this table where these onions are, um, that turns into where we pack two pound bags in what we call a retail ready product. Um, if I'm packing anything retail ready, other than those herb clam shells out there, sorry boys, packing these little fun bags, these hold anywhere from 1.5 like pounds like Brussels sprouts and baby fennel, um, which are pretty popular, uh, two carrots, carrots and beets. I don't like to you know put any onions or anything in there like that. Um, but you know that's a pretty normal day for someone to come in here, have a bit of carrots, and pack carrots for eight hours. That's a pretty normal day. Um, obviously when I pack carrots, the less carrots in a plastic bag, the more money you make. Uh, so that's cool. I started doing this. I'm not sure if it pays off totally. Um, people really like it. I think that it looks great. And I also like it too because the carrots hold up really well in people's refrigerators. Um, unfortunately, carrots will get dehydrated very quickly. After the tour is over, I'll come back in here and come clean these carrots up and spray them down and put them in a closed top bin so they stay moist. It's dry in here, it's really dry in here. And the reason is because I got my shallots in here. And so I told the guys to keep the freaking hoses out of here for a couple weeks until I can figure it out. Those shallots, they're gonna live in here for a little while. The other big cooler is super moist in there because that's where all the greens are and all that stuff. So this is a nice cooler. I uh, got a little seed stock of garlic, getting a little seed stock of garlic from Liam, mixing it up with garlic. Um, this is a nice place for alliums. I like it. It's a little bit warm, but none of these, all the, I mean, these are not a storage onion, right? This is still a fresh onion. And so I'm pretty pumped that it's at like, you know, 45 degrees would be really nice. I can move through it. It'll take me a couple weeks. These shallots, though, they want to be in the other coil. He'll want to be 38. 